Welcome to Microchip's code review of static write operations on the MCP3X6X Delta Sigma ADC using 16-bit 24F MCUs. Tools used for this code example are the PIC24F Curiosity Board with onboard debugger, the MCP3564 Clickboard from Microelectronica, and MPLAB X IDE version 5.50 with XC16 compiler version 1.70. The MCP3X6X family of devices have registers of 8, 16, and 24-bit depth. The MCP3X6X SPI module will only support incremental write commands. That is, there is no dedicated static write command for single register operations. Incremental write commands will automatically increment the register pointer once all bits of the register have been written. Therefore, the entire configuration register set can be written with a single incremental write command. Caution must be taken, however, to ensure data bytes transmitted align with the depth of the registers being written, as misaligned writes will result in erroneous register configuration. Fortunately, however, despite lack of a dedicated static write command, there is a way to achieve static write operations via precise timing and control of the chip select pin. Static write operations can be achieved by taking advantage of the buffered depth control feature found on most 16-bit hardware SPI modules to align serial clock pulses and bursts with register depth. The PIC24 and DSPIC33 devices have a mode 16 and or mode 32 control bit offering buffer depths of 8, 16, or 32 bits. Therefore, communication with a client device can be data aligned in packets of 8, 16, or 32 bits, depending on the setting of the mode 16 and or mode 32 configuration bits. Before jumping into the techniques for writing the MCP3X6X configuration registers, a quick comment regarding the behavior of the 16-bit XC16 compiler is probably warranted. Unlike the XCA compiler, the XC16 compiler only supports 8, 16, or 32-bit variables. There is no support for 24-bit variables in the XC16 compiler. As such, the code example we'll discuss will use an 8-bit variable for the dedicated read-write commands whereas a 32-bit variable will be used to hold the 8 and or 24-bit data to be written to the device configuration registers. Let's start by exploring static write operations in 8-bit SPI mode. In 8-bit SPI mode, command and data must be transmitted in packets of 8 bits via the SPI buff L70 bits. It should be noted that neither the SPI buff H150 or SPI buff L158 bits are used in 8-bit SPI mode. To achieve proper packet transmission and ensure data alignment with the configuration register being written, the 32-bit write data variable must be parsed into individual upper, high, and low 8-bit values. Static write operations to 8-bit registers, such as those shown here, are achieved by sending the command and data in two sequential 8-bit packets via the SPI buff L70 bits. Similarly, static write operations to 24-bit registers, as shown here, are achieved by sending command and data in four sequential 8-bit packets via the SPI buff L70 bits. Let's now take a look at what the parsing code for a 24-bit static write operation would look like in 8-bit SPI mode. Let's assume a write data value of 0x00123456. The 24-bit write data value will be parsed into an 8-bit upper value of 0x12, an 8-bit high value of 0x34, and an 8-bit low value of 0x56. And finally, it should be noted that since all MCP3x6x commands are 8 bits in depth, there is no need for parsing or concatenation since all transmissions in 8-bit SPI mode are also 8 bits in depth. Now that we've shown how data must be parsed for 8-bit transmission, let's take a look at how a host SPI module operating in 8-bit mode can facilitate a static write operation using the incremental write command. In 8-bit SPI mode, the SPI module will burst packets of 8 bits and stop when the hardware shift register is empty. So how do we know when the shift register is empty and consequently when chip select can be raised to terminate the incremental write command? The PIC24 and DSPIC33 devices have a shift register empty flag, which when set to a 1, will indicate when the 8-bit data has successfully transmitted. Therefore, when the SRMT bit is set to a 1 and the number of data bytes transmitted is equal to the target register depth, chip select can be raised to complete the static write operation. 
So let's take a look at what this looks like in a transmission sequence. In the table on the left, we show an 8 and 24-bit static write sequence, and the code needed to execute the sequence is shown on the right. For a static write operation of an 8-bit register, chip select must first be asserted low. The 8-bit incremental write command can then be transmitted immediately. Once the SPI module SRMT bit is set and transmission of the incremental write command has completed, the 8-bit data value can be transmitted. Once transmission of the 8-bit data value has completed and the SRMT bit is set, chip select can be raised to terminate the write sequence. Static write operations of a 24-bit register are similar to 8-bit register writes, where chip select is first asserted low, followed by the 8-bit incremental write command. Once the SRMT bit is set, completing the incremental write command transmission, the upper byte of the 24-bit data value is transmitted, followed by the high and low data byte values. Once transmission of the low data byte has completed and the SRMT bit is set, chip select can be raised to terminate the write sequence. As we've shown here, since all MCP3x6x commands and data values can be divided into an integer number of 8-bit data bytes, transmission in 8-bit SPI mode is fairly simple. Now, let's take a look at static write operations in 16-bit SPI mode and how the number of packets transmitted can be reduced and thereby increase throughput. In 16-bit SPI mode, command and data must be transmitted in packets of 16 bits via the SPI buff L150 bits. As is the case in 8-bit mode, 16-bit mode does not make use of the SPI buff H150 bits. All packets will be transmitted via the SPI buff L150 bits only. So how do we achieve proper packet transmission and ensure data alignment with the configuration register being written? First, the 8-bit write command will be concatenated with the 32-bit write data value and then parsed into two 16-bit words shown here as the write command write data and write data write data variables. The 16-bit write command write data value is comprised of the write command and 8 bits of data, whereas the 16-bit write data write data value is comprised entirely of data. For static write operations to 8-bit registers, only the write command write data value is transmitted via the SPI buff L150 bits, as this one 16-bit packet is comprised of everything needed to complete the 8-bit static write operation, that is, the 8-bit write command and the 8-bit data byte. For static write operations to 24-bit registers, both the write command write data and write data write data values will be transmitted via the SPI buff L150 bits, as these two 16-bit words will be comprised of everything needed to complete the 24-bit static write operation, that is, the 8-bit write command and the 8-bit upper, high, and low data bytes. Let's now take a look at what the parsing code for a 24-bit static write operation would look like in 16-bit SPI mode. Let's assume a write command of 0x5e indicating a write to the scan register and a write data value of 0x00123456. First, the command and data are concatenated to form a command and data value of 0x 5e123456. And finally, the command and data value will then be parsed into a write command write data value of 0x5e12 and a write data write data value of 0x3456. These two variable values can now be transmitted as two individual 16 bit packets via the SPI buff L150 bits, as we will now demonstrate. Now that we've shown how data must be parsed for 16-bit transmission, let's take a look at how a host SPI module operating in 16-bit mode can facilitate a static write operation using the incremental write command. As in 8-bit mode, in 16-bit mode, the SPI module will burst packets of 16 bits and stop when the hardware shift register is empty. Once more, when the shift register is empty, the SRMT bit will be set to a 1, indicating when the 16-bit data has been successfully transmitted. And finally, when the SRMT bit is set to a 1 and the number of data bytes transmitted is equal to the target register depth, chip select can be raised to complete the static write operation. So let's take a look at what this looks like in a transmission sequence. Once again, in the table on the left, we show an 8 and 24 bit static write sequence, and the code needed to execute the sequence is shown on the right. 
For a static write operation of an 8-bit register, chip select must first be asserted low, as expected. This time, however, rather than sending just the 8-bit incremental write command, we transmit the write command along with the 8-bit data value as a single 16-bit packet. Once the SPI module SRMT bit is set and transmission of the incremental write command and 8-bit data value has completed, chip select can be raised to terminate the write sequence. Similarly, static write operations of a 24-bit register are initiated with chip select first being asserted low, followed by the 8-bit incremental write command and the 8-bit upper data byte. In this case, however, rather than raising chip select at this point, we must transmit the 8-bit high and low data bytes. Once the SRMT bit is set, completing the transmission of the high and low data bytes, chip select can be raised to terminate the write sequence. As you can see, static write operations in 16-bit SPI mode are not all that different from 8-bit SPI mode, the only difference being the number of bits transmitted by the SPI buff L register during each transmission. And finally, we'll take a look at static write operations in 32-bit SPI mode. In 32-bit SPI mode, command and data must be transmitted in packets of 16 bits via the SPI buff H150 and SPI buff L150 bits. It should be noted, however, in 32-bit mode, the SPI module will transmit both SPI buff H and SPI buff L as if they were transmitted from a single 32-bit hardware shift register. That is, there is no delay in the transmission of these two 16-bit registers. It is this key functionality of the SPI module which can be problematic when attempting to perform static write operations in 32-bit SPI mode. Once again, how do we achieve proper packet transmission and ensure data alignment with the configuration register being written? Similar to 16-bit SPI mode, first the 8-bit write command will be concatenated with the 32-bit write data value and then parsed into two 16-bit words, write command write data and write data write data. Again, the 16-bit write command write data value is comprised of the write command and 8 bits of data, whereas the 16-bit write data write data value is comprised entirely of data. Now, before we look at static write operations to 8-bit registers, let's first take a look at static write operations to 24-bit registers, as these registers are a bit more amenable to 32-bit SPI mode. For static write operations to 24-bit registers, the write command write data value will be transmitted via the SPI buff H150 bits, and the write data write data value will be transmitted via the SPI buff L150 bits. These two 16-bit words will be comprised of everything needed to complete the 24-bit static write operation, that is, the 8-bit write command and the 8-bit upper, high, and low data bytes. For static write operations to 8-bit registers, however, data alignment becomes problematic as there is no way of knowing when the SPI buff H150 bits have completed transmission, since the SPI module treats the SPI buff H and SPI buff L registers as a single 32-bit hardware shift register. As we'll demonstrate, knowing when the SPI buff H150 bits have completed transmission is key to knowing when to raise chip select and therefore completing the static write operation. Now, let's take a closer look at how a host SPI module operating in 32-bit mode can pose a potential problem for client devices which have 8-bit registers as part of its configuration register set. As in 8 and 16-bit modes, in 32-bit mode, the SPI module will burst packets of 32 bits and stop when the hardware shift register is empty. Once more, when the shift register is empty, the SRMT bit will be set to a 1, indicating when the 32-bit data has been successfully transmitted. And finally, when the SRMT bit is set to a 1 and the number of data bytes transmitted is equal to the target register depth, chip select can be raised to complete the static write operation. While this mode of operation is okay for 24-bit data configuration registers, for 8-bit registers, it poses a data alignment problem as there is no indication of when the data held in the SPI buff H150 bits has completed transmission, and any data transmitted greater than the depth of the register being written will be erroneously written to the next configuration register in the register set, potentially resulting in unexpected behavior. In the example shown here, we show how a 32-bit static write operation would behave if a full 24 bits of data were written to the 8-bit config 0 register as part of a 32-bit packet. As shown, the SPI buff H15 8 bits would contain the incremental write command, and the SPI buff H70 bits would contain the config 0 configuration data. However, since this is a 32-bit operation, the SPI buff L15 0 bits will also be transmitted. Therefore, any data contained in the SPI buff L15 8 bits will be written to the config 1 register, 
and any data contained in the SPI buff L70 bits will be written to the config2 register. With this example, it should be understood that 32-bit static write operations are not recommended with the MCP3x6x family of devices unless the host SPI module has a mechanism for indicating when bit 0 of the SPI buff H register has completed its transmission on the SPI bus. With that, this will conclude our code review of 8, 16, and 32-bit static write operations for the MCP3x6x Delta Sigma ADC converter using 16-bit MCUs. For additional information regarding the MCP3x6x family of ADCs, please visit www.microchip.com forward slash MCP3564, where all collateral, including the device data sheet and any application notes, code examples, evaluation boards, or reference designs available for the device will be provided. In closing, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to view this short video regarding MCP3x6x static write operations using 16-bit MCUs. Please be sure to visit our Microchip University page at www.microchip.com forward slash MU for additional on-demand training material, as well as special educational events which will be offered throughout the year. Thank you and have a nice day.